boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this is the review of House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 2, entitled Sleep With One Eye Open. And you have to on, on this show. It is kind of a uh kind of a double meaning, being as though uh uh Amon was the initial target who has one eye and he was he was the main target of that assassination attempt yet we uh uh got the most disturbing uh I would say the most disturbing death in Game of Thrones slash House of the Dragon uh, uh television with the decapitation of the young prince in uh last week's episode which we didn't see the decapitation, but we didn't have to see it. You, uh, they let your imagination do all the work, and it did the work for me, <laughs> and it was brutal. This uh, this season, we're diving right in. This episode, we're diving right in. I mean, we we normally when you get a a, a new season or a, a new series, we we don't get the real gist of the story until maybe episode three or four deep into the season, midway point of the season where you know where everything's heading, but not so much here. Um, And Game of Thrones has done that throughout. And House of the Dragon is picking up with that same uh, trend. We dove right in in this episode. We picked up right after that heinous act, and we are dealing with the aftermath of that event in this pure chaos in uh the king's landing with uh uh aegon going bananas that his son was murdered mere feet away from him you know in in the same house uh unbeknownst to him and it's just pure chaos you know uh after witnessing king veneris in season one construct this just beautiful beautifully crafted model of king's landing in his room uh is reduced to rubble because of uh uh, aegon and he's just destroying it out of rage in his room after learning of the death of his son and so the king is in anger he's in the anger stage of grief you know long before an emergency meeting is called uh by the council to kind of address their next steps moving forward with this action committed by Rhaenerys. At least that's what they feel. Rhaenerys is the one who sent these assassins to murder the prince. And so uh, we have Otto Hightower, who is, you know, a typical politician who will use anything as a way of spreading propaganda, spreading false uh fake news if you will and try to get the people behind them this is an opportunity he he doesn't uh, have a moment of grief i mean after all this is his grandson um <laughs> or great grand wait grandson great grandson i don't know the family tree in these <laughs> in these houses here is is all messed up you know, sisters and brothers marrying each other and all this other stuff. So I, I don't know, but I, I think it's his great grandson. Uh, but yeah, it's his great grandson. Nonetheless, uh, he's not grieving, you know, but he's grieving. He's telling everybody he is, but he's doing it in his own way. And he wants to use this as an opportunity to rally the people, the, the, the townsfolk around them, you know, because there are some people in King's Landing who believe Renera is the rightful heir to the throne. She is the queen. And uh, there's a split there. There's a divide there with the people. So this will be an opportunity to show the people, like, look what Renera did. You know, look what she did. She's a king, uh, 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 a kin slayer. She's a monster. She's a murderer of children, you know. And that is a way to pull the people to their side, which is an understandable thing. But the timing of it all, man. The time, the timing of it was brutal. Uh, just to go over some points throughout this episode, uh, uh, was it blood or was it cheese? Which one is it, blood or cheese? Blood is the one they caught. 
well, they end up catching them both. Uh, but Blood is the one they have uh, locked up in a cell, and he was the one who had the actual head of the prince in his satchel. He was going to take it back uh, and, <laughs> and show Damon, I guess, like, looky here, look what I got. And they caught him. And so he's in the cell, and, um, oh, man, what's the dude's name? The one with the foot fetish. Uh, <laughs> the one that's the uh, kind of the little finger of this season, of this show. Um, oh, what's his name? I don't know why it's, it, it's escaping me. But anyways, he goes into the cell. He has some torture weapon. <laughs> and I found this so funny because Blood in the first episode, he was just brooding, like just a killing machine. He was willing to kill a, 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 a kid. You know, just decapitate, not willing, but he did it. He decapitated a kid, you know, uh, for money. And he didn't care. But as soon as he was facing torture of his own, he hurried up and ratted. I mean, ratted, no pun intended, the rat catcher out. I mean, instantly. <laughs> they didn't even get a chance to pull the tools out. As soon as they dropped him on the little table there, he was like, oh, yeah, it wasn't me. Uh, 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 Damon, the one, Damon Targaryen, he he hired me. I mean, he told it all. <laughs> he told it all. And I was like, man, this is crazy, boy. I, I, it, it was so sad. It was so sad. You don't cheer for the Greens. You, you're really not cheering for Aegon and uh, Allison and the High Towers and all this here. But in this moment, in this moment, you can't help but kind of get on their side. And what uh, Aragon does to blood in that cell, you feel him. You actually want it to be worse than what he did actually did. But uh, blood was sitting there. He was like, oh, please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. I'm like, you begging for your life after what you just did, man? <laughs> what you just did? And, um, uh, Ergon comes in and uh, I guess with a mallet or a maul, whatever it was, and I guess beats him to death or whatever he does. And so uh, he did rat out. It was a rat catcher, but he didn't know his name. Uh, he wouldn't tell the name. And so in that instance, uh, the king orders all the rat catchers to be killed. And so later on in the episode, we see all the rat catchers just strung out along King's Landing, just hung. All of them dead. He killed them all. He, since he didn't know who, he killed them all. <laughs> he covered all bases. And he did get the one, uh, Cheese. He did get uh, Cheese. Uh, he was uh, also dangling, it, dangling there as well. Uh, this angers Otto. This angers him. And he goes to Aragon, and he's like, man, you killed innocents. He's like, well, I killed them. It didn't matter. I got the one I wanted. If it cost us all those innocents to get the one, fine, you know. And you, you really have to sit back and think. It, it, put yourself in <laughs> in his shoes for a minute, minute. And what would you do? Because I can't, honestly, I can't sit here and tell you that I wouldn't do it differently. And that's sad. And I, I might have to pray and repent on that. But that's <laughs> that's how I would feel if that was to happen to my kids. Yeah, everybody's got to die. I mean, you, you, if if I can't get a name and I only know your profession, you know, if you, uh, if I know that the person that murdered my children is uh, 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 works fries at McDonald's, everybody who works fries at every McDonald's that I can get to is going to die. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that's just how it is. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's sad. You know, once again, it's a heinous act. Yes, innocent people died. But when you put yourself in Aegon's shoes, would you react differently? I, I can't sit here and tell you that I wouldn't. Uh, but uh, moving on, you have the other story that's gone along uh, in Dragonstone, where we have Renera reacting to what took place. This is something that she did not want. This, this She did not order this. You know, uh, killing of a child. And so she is devastated by this. She is angered by this because she knows that all of this, she's being blamed for this and she didn't do it. And 
you have uh, uh, Damon, he's just sitting there smug, you know, like, yeah, I did it, whatever, whatever. But I love the look in that scene when they're sitting around the table that uh, Renice gives to Damon because she knows. She know, she immediately knows who ordered that hit. And I guess uh, uh, Renera saw that look, and she looked over at Damon, and immediately she knew. And so the very next scene, she confronts Damon about it, and, and they have a, a, a awesome back and forth, a master class of acting in this scene by uh, Smith and uh, Emily Dawson. Uh, Darcy, I'm sorry. It, it, just an amazing class of acting. If you want to be an actor in any facet, whether it's in movies, television, or theater, watch that scene. That is an awesome scene that those two put together. Uh, very powerful. Really enjoyed that. So uh, they go their separate ways. Meanwhile, you have uh, Sir Kristen Cole who is feeling the guilt, feeling the guilt of not being on watch during that assassination uh, attempt because he was too busy doing the boom shoom with Allison. And so he was not on guard, you know, and now he's kind of spreading his guilt to others. You know what I'm saying? And uh, his main target of vitriol is directed to uh, the uh sir eric i think is it sir eric or sir allen one of them the twins uh but the one that's on their side and he directs his venom towards him like where were you you was on watch where were you when this happened and then the, the, he asked uh, uh christian cole well where were you you know <laughs> you know you you jumping on me but where were you and, and is a, a back and forth there and he enlists or should I say entices uh, him to go to Dragonstone and kill Renera. And this is like, okay, now we're getting, now we're getting deep here. <laughs> now we get into this. Uh, uh, everybody want to sneak in and with these assassinations attempts, which we know is going to just blow up into this full scale war before it's all said, no uh, done. And we get that attempt. And we get a showdown between the two twin brothers. And I'm going to tell you, this was an heart, a heart pounding scene that really uh, came out of nowhere for me. I wasn't expecting to be uh, this white knuckled edge of my seat throughout this scene when uh, uh, A-Rock is going through the castle on his way to murder Renera and disguising himself not really disguising himself because he's an identical twin of eric and finally gets there and when he gets into there he's like he still has this sense of honor because he tells renera before he goes to lung jatter that i didn't want to do this you know i don't want to do this but he's bound by duty and just before he uh is able to uh approach renera his twin brother Eric enters and they have a showdown, a nice battle in the room going at each other to the point, to the point where Eric kills his brother. He has to kill his brother. And this was so gut wrenching because it, when he turned to Renera, he, he just apologized. He apologized to her and turned to, sword on himself and pretty much gave himself a samurai death and it was like oh man is he killing his it's like he's he killed himself for two reasons one because he killed his he had to kill his twin brother and two that he almost got the queen killed you know it is it, like uh, it was a it was a double-edged sword no no pun intended and he just had to, he had to take himself out. Gut wrenching, uh, gut wrenching scene is sad to see him go. But regardless of all that, we, we, we got a lot set up moving forward. This is going to have some major ramifications, uh, 
I mean, Kristen Cole ordered this hit. He ordered this hit, as, and it was failed. Now, for better or worse, Damon's the assassination hit didn't go according to plan, but plan B was executed. <laughs> he got plan B across. Uh, Kristen Cole's plan didn't work at all. And so now this is really, really going to get into the uh, 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 deep end of the pool, so to, so to speak. But uh, moving forward, this is this is exciting, man. This was an exciting episode. This was a long episode. They credited it for an hour and 20 minutes, but it didn't feel. I, don't, I think it was more credit credits than anything because it, it, it finished about an hour into it. it. At least mine did. I don't know. I don't know. Did I miss something? A, a post credit scene or something? I don't know. But uh, it was. It didn't feel that long. It, of course, that's due to the good direction and the writing and the acting and everything that's taking place in this episode, because it moved at a very swift pace, uh, almost akin to a action movie. You know, an action packed movie. But it it really wasn't a whole lot of action aside from that uh, sword battle between the two uh, uh, brothers, twin brothers there, but it was very, very swift, man. It was, But it was exciting nonetheless. I am so happy with how this uh, season of House of the Dragon is going so far. I know it's only two episodes in, and the wheels can very well fall off before it's all said and done, but so far, so good. I would like to know how are you feeling about House of the Dragon season two? Are you excited for what's coming up next? Are you surprised by uh, the number of deaths that we have gotten already? You know, we're two episodes into this season. We've got some major deaths that have already taken place. I know when we, and I don't, you know, really don't want to compare it to uh, uh, Game of Thrones proper, but Game of Thrones didn't have that. It had a lot of deaths, don't get me wrong, but not so many compound together. But And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and I know that's, that's coming off bad. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but it's, I'm talking story-wise. Uh, but it, it's weird that we're getting so much death in these first two episodes, and we haven't even gotten to the war part of this yet. And so this is going to be... A uh, bloody episode, uh, not episode, but bloody season in season two. But I would like to know your thoughts of season two so far. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also search for this show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Don't forget to subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube and like this video if you don't mind. Also, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this review of Episode 2 of House of the Dragon, Season 2, available now on Max. want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love everyone. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.